All right, so back to paid partnerships. Uh, Festool, what's the rage? I don't get it. I don't even like the colors. Maybe that's it. Fuck Come you, on. I'd have it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if someone gave it to me for free, but I would probably then just sell it on an online marketplace <laughs> to get myself a Bosch equivalent. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing with them is, I mean, they are really good and really sturdy and they will last a really long time if you use them like eight hours a day, five days a week for 10 years and they yeah. will still function. And I mean, if I would never, it would be so wasted on me. <laughs> I mean, the, the only fest tool thing I have is uh, a folding ruler. <laughs> I bought my wife one of those for Christmas. And, it, and it's great. It's awesome. It has the, the degrees uh, if you fold it up a bit and it's, uh-huh. it's, it's really great. But I will n- probably never get another fest tool thing uh, if I don't stumble over one on an auction site or something like that the only two tools i don't understand about festool the big fuss is the the folding ruler i don't understand folding rulers i don't see why you'd use one of those over a tape measure and the festool domino (laughs) (laughs) i was waiting to if if you didn't bring it up i'll bring it up yeah uh and I mean, the Domino is actually a tool I could see myself using instead of the biscuits. But the price, I mean, it it really doesn't justify it. I think that depends on how much you use it. I mean, if you're building table tops yeah. uh, each and every day, sure, great thing. But if you're a more were a hobbyist maker and and not gluing up big big slabs. Left, right, and center. Then I don't see the use of it. But I'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret because you can actually glue two boards together without using dominoes you or can't. any inserts or anything. You can't. Yeah, you can. Of course, you get <laughs> cracks every now and then, but that's yeah. just uh, just write that off as uh, patina or anything like that, and a rustic and anything, and you just yeah. add to the price. Yeah, I've, uh, I've. If you have a cabinet with some cracks in it, I mean, they go for double than the new one. I mean, there are actually people <laughs> buying new cabinets and then brushing them down so they look old and worn, and then sell them off. So uh, I mean, that's... I mean, it's re- it's really nice to have something to help you line stuff up. But I mean, I just use uh, a ruler. What's it no uh, pegs. <laughs> uh, you just drill drill holes and use uh, dowels instead. That works fine I as well. Yeah, it does. I've done that. I've, I've also glued plenty of bits of wood together without having to insert anything into anywhere. It's yeah. worked just fine. Yeah. Quite right. I also use screws and then I pl- plug them. And I mean, of course, I, I take time so I actually align them so it looks deliberate, but I think a good plug Dirty might look bastard. good at furniture. So. Do, do, you, do you screw and then uh, drill it up? out and plug it or do you countersink and put a plug above the screw um no i i start actually by drilling the larger hole um Mm. which is going to fit the plug and then i pre-drill a hole in there again so that i don't crack anything using the screw and i put in the screw and then of course uh, i plug the hole afterwards I don't I mind seeing screws that much. So. No, I like I don't screws. really see the point of that. <laughs> there are certain things you don't want to see a screw in, though, aren't there? Or any sort of fixing, really. Oh, I don't care. Yeah, I've done a, you know, I did a nice walnut mitered hallway uh, table, you know, and to put some screws visible in that would have been, <laughs> been atrocious. Would have been looked bloody awful. Then you just put in more screws and make it a, a feature. <laughs> screws yeah, bloody some, everywhere. <laughs> and some fancy brass screws or something like that. And then they thought, ooh, oh. he got the nice kind. If we're talking about stuff, we don't really get fancy brass screws. I I don't get it. And especially if when you people go for, for domed flathead screws. Because they look so good. I think they look awful. I've had a need for black screws quite a, on quite a few things I've done. 
Yeah. They're not they're not as readily available. No, you have to order them, at least here. Nobody sells them over the yeah. counter. And I also like I like the hex screws and of course uh, flat screws are rubbish. Yeah. Uh, it should be banned by law. Um, and uh, yeah, screws are made to really clamp things down. So you need something that you can put some torque into. So hex yeah. screws are brilliant. I don't see the point of Phillips or flathead of any of those. And uh -huh. the same with brass yeah. screws. I mean, I use screws to keep things together. And brass screws are basically for just uh, pimping something because yeah. if you put too much torque into it you twist the head off or you ruin the yeah well don't like it <laughs> changing the uh, subject I had a funny thing happen this week so I run the Instagram for number one crude mistakes and I obviously run my own number one projects Instagram and this past week or so, I've had the same guy messaging me on both, asking, talking about sticker swapping. And I thought he'd figured out that I was the same guy doing the same accounts. <laughs> 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 so he, uh, he messaged me for number one projects and, uh, uh, you know, we swapped addresses. And then uh, he messaged me again on the number one crude mistakes and said, so do you want to, do you want to do the sticker swap thing then? And, and then he just yeah. asked you, oh, so you actually live with this other guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just did laughy face. Yeah, I'll, I'll swap. Uh, here's my address. I just gave the first line of the address and then loads of laughy faces. <laughs> <laughs> and then a day later, I got another message. Seriously, do you want to swap? <laughs> oh, hang on. I get it. <laughs> You're the same guy. <laughs> And I'm going, to, I'm going to shout him out because I don't think he'll mind. That's Danny's DIY shed. <laughs> and hit ah. him up. He's got some lovely stickers to swap with you if you want one from him. <laughs> yeah, I could do a, a sticker swap. I have a lot uh, of stickers just laying around. There and I I've just typed out the envelope to send him. <laughs> <laughs> did you see what he did to his hand? No. No, I saw, I saw a bandage. Uh, so, Havard <laughs> drilled his thumb. Yeah, Danny yeah. forced a bit at his finger, went straight through the tendon. Had to have surgery. I think oh, it was Jesus yesterday. Ah. <laughs> ah, oof, oof, no, no, you're not supposed to do that. Oof. Ah. <laughs> I love forcing a bit, but that sounds oof, terrible. <laughs> that can do a lot of damage. <laughs> But he's had his surgery and he's just putting out um, old projects he's done for the past couple, for the next couple of weeks while he heals. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But it, it looked bloody awful. Oh. I hope it comes out okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to hear. <laughs> I actually, my, the wound has healed uh, and I get a nice scar, which is always nice. I collect scars. That's okay. But. It is, uh, you know, that tingling feeling if you have been sitting cross legged or something, or you have been putting your hand in the wrong direction, and then when the blood flow starts going again, you get that tingling feeling. Yep. I got that in my thumb now if I touch the area where I drilled myself in the finger. So I think I have touched a nerve or two uh, down the side of my finger. Who, is now grown back together, but it uh, the connections might be a bit off. So I actually, if I <laughs> if I just touch where I drilled myself, I can actually feel this tingling sensation on the inside of my entire thumb. It doesn't hurt or anything; it just feels weird. So if you touch anything else on your body, do you get that tingling sensation? <laughs> oh, <let's... laughs> or do you have yeah, to think about specific yeah. things? <laughs> You mean he's drilled himself a G spot? <laughs> <laughs> Tickle my thumb. Tickle my thumb. <laughs> that's the that's the headline for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, 
a Forstner bit that sounds ooh. yeah yeah I mean that's uh, those fast spinning blades which is what a Forstner bit is compared to a drill <laughs> that's they've always scared me in the in the workshop I mean the saw blades and and routers and those that when, <laughs> when it's a chunky blade that I actually can rip stuff from you <laughs> yeah that's uh I don't I don't I don't get scared by workshop tools and maybe I should, but you know, because I use chainsaws and six hundred six hundred mil long hedge cutters and you know, all sorts of things, you know, lawn mowers with a four hundred and fifty mil um, blade on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. don't get scared by the workshop stuff. I have a, a usually no, but some tools. Um I do want to get a lathe, but there is something about rot- uh, rotating machinery with a certain amount of mass that really doesn't stop. I mean, a hand drill, even a chainsaw, of course, you can cut yourself, but once you do, your natural reflex is to just let go and the chain will stop. And it's the same with the drill. I mean, you can do some damage, but on a lathe with that kind of mass going around, I mean... If you get stuck there, it doesn't really matter if you let go. It will drag you in and really maim you. And yeah. I'm not sure if I have the focus all the time <laughs> to work with those <laughs> tools because I have so much thoughts going around my head that the concentration I think is needed for working on a lathe. I'm not sure if that's a safe <laughs> spot for me, actually. So I was thinking maybe I should get like a foot pedal. So if I step off the pedal, it would actually it should just shut the power to the entire machine. But still, it will ah, like a train. Ro- rotate <laughs> kind of viciously for a couple of cycles. So if it pulls you in, then you're going to feel it. Quite a few years ago, I was um, using a chainsaw. And um, I'd probably been using it for about five hours, just chopping up some the top of a conifer hedge. It, I'd had friends chop it down, and I was just logging it, basically. But I'd been on that thing for about five hours and got a little bit complacent. Stopped using it and just put the chainsaw down to my side without putting the brake on. And managed to cut through halfway through the Nokia phone that was in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and given it's a Nokia phone, that says quite a lot. I mean, and that it... was one of the old indestructible Nokia phones as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and if that it was while it was that just one, it would down. probably have cut you in half and dug itself halfway to China. So I'm <laughs> yeah. really glad you had that phone on you. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, there's still a bit of still a bit of inertia carrying those blades on even when they you know, even when you've not got the revs on. Yeah. <laughs> so do you want a camera update? Yep. Yep. Hit us. Okay. So one thing I didn't tell you it had, which I forgot to tell you, and it's a brilliant feature. It's got a remote control. Mm, that's nice. Oh mm. that's nice. That's brilliant. So you don't get that wavy camera thing when you're turning it on and off. You that yeah. bit you always have to cut out of your shots. And I told you it came with two batteries. Yeah. Which are shit. <laughs> <laughs> For two reasons. One reason they don't last very long. And the other reason is you can only charge them up while they're attached to the camera. Ah, no charger. Oh. Um. <laughs> So it's absolutely Sneaky. pointless having two batteries for it. But do you have a power input? So could you put an external power source? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> because I actually did that on... I can do that on my camera. So I have a like a battery converter. So I can actually have a, a Bosch battery on my tripod and just connect a cable to the camera. And then I can oh, move yeah. the entire tripod with... Uh, yeah, then now I can I c- switch batteries as well long as i want yeah now i've been connecting it up to a battery uh, bank which has been yeah. working quite nicely yeah. yeah so you can carry on using it that way um and the other thing is that the resolution is great on most shots apart from it has that cowling around the lens which i can remove but i put it on because it looked cool yeah and when you've got the camera pointing down it doesn't let enough light into the shot into the yeah. lens so that makes for a really dull picture and also, mm. I'm sure the lens is statically charged and it collects all the dust from the workshop, which the phone camera never <laughs> used to do. <laughs> yeah. 
So that's uh, this week's update for the camera. <laughs> and that's the same thing with... Uh, I had this cowling on my di digital camera, and of course it was brilliant outside, uh, but in the other settings it didn't work, and then I also got a wide-angle lens, and then, of course, I wanted to use it outside, but I think I used it for an entire holiday, and then when I came home and started downloading the image and looking at them <laughs> on anything else than the small screen, it's this shadow in the upper part of the picture. Like, looks like somebody put a thumb over the lens or something. What is that? Is it a smudge? And I started looking at the lens. Oh, yeah, that's a cowling, of course. Yeah, <laughs> so... yeah when I, I, I used to... I, I took lots of lots of photos you know, while at university, and I had that on mostly as a protection, because then you can bump into stuff without rubbing the <laughs> genius <laughs> lens on. That is actually brilliant. We had um, uh, my insurance company; they have something called like uh, I call it an idiot fish, like uh, idiot insurance, but it's like. Uh, accident insurance for small electrical items so i think i paid 10 10 12 pounds a year and it covered the cost of the camera if you tripped and fell or if you lost it of course if it was stolen and anything and that that really took the the reservation from using it everywhere out of the picture because I could I could be on a jetty balancing and holding the camera out to get the perfect shot because okay there is a risk I might lose it but then the insurance will actually cover it which was nice so I could actually bring the camera with me everywhere without being afraid of breaking it if I did something stupid which I never ended up doing so but that's the point of the insurance I guess yeah <laughs> But I think we talked about that earlier. So if if someone are in uh, in the market for a well used DSLR, we're just collecting dust. It's for sale, <laughs> cheaply. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, KJ, get in there. I have two already <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that I don't use. I don't need. <laughs> So we can team up and we can give you a once-in-a-lifetime three-for-one <laughs> offer. <laughs> uh, actually, I've got, a, mine. I've got a DSLR and a bridging camera somewhere as well. Can I throw those in? <laughs> That's the problem. Everyone got one. Yeah. So it's like, I don't need another one. <laughs> My oldest is from 2005. And I think I bought the other one like 2010. So, yeah. They're a bit on the old side. <laughs> yeah. It's a brilliant camera, though. It's just, I never use it. Yeah, it's so much easier when you have a great thing on your phone. Are you not Plus. tempted to set up a second camera while you're filming things? Nah, it's... I just... I, I have a second phone in, instead. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> works better. I remember the the camera that I have. It was the first one that Nikon had that also did video. But I think it's you might get 1080p, but the image size is it's not full uh, like wide video. Um, yeah, and it didn't have autofocus, so you had to manually set the focus and. Yeah. Uh, of course, it only filmed for five minutes and then it shuts off. It, it really doesn't allow you to film longer shots than that. And still, of course, the objectives were really good, but the video was just mediocre uh, because it was the first camera and I didn't. It was a gimmick at that point. But then, of course, the next models, I really understand that people are actually using this for filming rather than taking still photos. But it's too much of a hassle and the video is not compatible with anything that I have, would film on my phone even. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's not usable as a second camera in the workshop. Sadly not. 
but it looks great. Of course, I have the cowl on it, and I also got the extra battery grip. Um, I brought it Ooh. with me on that canoe trip in uh, in the Yukon River, uh, so I also needed batteries that didn't need it charging. So I got the battery grip, which you also could use just standard double A batteries. So I brought like a separate bag of double A batteries for it. So it it ro- looks really good. It looks like someone would use in a journalist uh, situation in a war zone or something like that. So it, it looks the part, but still, yeah. that just add to the the weight and the bulkiness of the thing. So <laughs> yeah, the, the extra battery grip, it's like uh, having a, a a really huge lens. It looks professional. Yeah, <laughs> that's that little bit extra. <laughs> Just going to change the subject. Uh, last week, when we were talking, and I think it was about the time that um, Havard was talking about the Herdegirdes and whatnot, um, you mentioned KJ that Trondheim, you go there to get electrically shocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I, I've literally been thinking about that all week, <laughs> and I didn't want to, you know, obviously look it up when I've well, got I, you two. <laughs> I did study electrical engineering at university. So our co- of course our uh, brother slash sister uh, uh, section was also uh, electrical engineering, and they have this thing that uh, every year uh, the 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 new ones, the new students, uh, to be accepted into the fraternity or whatever they call it, uh, you have to shake hands with megavolt. It's called which okay. is a, a power glove, more or less, with uh, <laughs> with rings that that gives you an electric shock, and uh, and if you don't fall to your knees uh, in front, then then there are two people with uh, similar gloves just <laughs> smacking <laughs> on your shoulders because you're supposed to go down. Uh, so that's a rite of passage, and uh, of course the the visiting Swedes get a little bit extra. <laughs> <laughs> But then you get the uh, get cheers and uh, a medal and and yeah, That's you're awesome. you're uh, forever indicted in the Sankt Omega uh, uh, fraternity or whatever it's called in English. <laughs> yeah. Is there a bit of rivalry that goes on between Norway and Sweden? Oh yes, yeah. Um, Have I heard you, somebody mention the Swedish excuse or something like that before? Or <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. That was new to me, but I don't know uh, what that would be. Yeah, okay. Well, I would say I, it's a maybe like I just a, si- a sibling rivalry. It's yeah, a, I mean, of course, it's a... the way I see it. Denmark and Sweden have been fighting over the rights to bully Norway since before we were countries, <laughs> and I think that Sweden mistreated Norway more than the Danes did, and especially Sweden was more or less controlling Norway the last time before Norway became free. So I think Norway has a bigger thorn in their side against us than anyone else. Uh, okay. But we, we, okay, you can be free. It was around that time that, that Sweden decided, hmm, this thing war, that's a thing of the past, isn't it? Yeah, we don't do war anymore. No one should be fighting. And it was like, late 1800s or something like that no this is not going to be any more big wars <laughs> uh so we don't didn't want to fight so norway got to be free and then they go and find oil and we regretted it <laughs> so badly ever since uh, yeah i think it was um i don't know if that's a tr- true story but i, I think there was uh, at some point someone like all right, you can get uh, rights to uh, some oil fields if we get uh, Volvo or something like that. Or I, I, I don't think it was that, but there was uh, some rights to some uh, some areas that were decided. Uh, no, we don't want to do that trade. And then a few years later, it's like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a comedian who who laid out the idea that we should attack Norway, and the minute they strike back, we say, we surrender, take us. <laughs> and, and just have, have the oil fund uh, pay off our, our country's debt and that sort of thing. Yeah. I, I think it was... 
I don't remember, it was uh, way into the 2000s. Um, you had, uh, I think there was a lot of countries struggling, but Iceland had some financial issues. Uh, and then someone was just jokingly saying, well, maybe you should help them out and we could just like, okay, we'll, we'll help you out if you just, just swap your flag for the Norwegian one. And then I really love Iceland and uh, every Icelander I ever met. I feel like it's a, it's a brother or a sister. So I, I would really like for that to happen on a volunteer basis. <laughs> it doesn't need to be any <laughs> transaction going on. And I, I feel that as well as the entire Scandinavia. It, it's been, as you said, a lot of wars up and down. But I, I think it's, yeah, I think siblings would be a yeah. nice way to describe it. I mean, you stick together in thick and thin, but of course you you like to poke at each other. Yeah. Yeah, I, I also feel that we're more or less siblings that... And of we, course, we, we fight uh, really badly <laughs> with each other, but we got each other each other's backs as well. Yeah, and if it starts <laughs> to get out of the hand, and if you don't like the way things are turning, you can always bring up the Sweden's uh, neutrality in the war. So that is, <laughs> it just ends the discussion, and then you can move on. <laughs> yeah, as, as someone said recently at uh, the Second World War. Sweden was neutral on Germany's side at the start and neutral on England's side at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, I said we, we we stopped we stopped war was a thing of the past. We weren't supposed to be fighting. I thought we all agreed on that the entire world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left, and I've just got one question to ask Havard before this wraps up. And I think I've asked you before, but I think it was when we had that um, WhatsApp call, and I had a little bit to drink, so I can't remember the can't remember the answer. But there's a sign above your head on top of an arrow that says "pasty." Oh yeah, it's party. Oh, is it? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like pasty. <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought it said pasty before first. Uh, <laughs> Do you know what a pasty is? In... That being said, it might do actually. I, yeah. I think it's party, uh, but yeah. I thought I thought I thought the pasties were through that door. <laughs> That's where you kept them. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I put it up there, but it probably been there longer than I thought. But yeah, I I saw it tonight and thought, oh, I must ask, must ask what that. And this time's gone on. I thought, actually, I'm sure I've asked him this question before. <laughs> no, yeah. I don't think you have. And I've, oh, okay. I've been wondering myself. <laughs> but I'm too but then again, to say it's my, it's, it's my wife's sign. Uh, um, I don't do parties okay, anymore. What else, what, else, what else can we ask about in your house? What are those two things stood up at the... Is that a fireplace that you've got cards and stuff on? What's the no, other way? A... Look, the other way. There's two things stood up. It, yeah. What are those two ones? things there? Yeah. Uh, this is a, a guitar band, uh, like, uh, like, no, a guitar strap, which my uh, gran okay. grandmother mm. made for my father. So it's actually like a cross stitch uh, kind of thing. Oh, cool. And, uh, nice. It's re really nice. So it's, it's too nice for me to actually use it. So it's <laughs> just a decorative tie on the wall, basically. Too hey, nice to use. That's... Maybe for Christmas you could play us some guitar. Being the only one capable <laughs> of actually playing a, an instrument, you are the musician of the podcast. Yeah, I. I was, that being said, I was. No, I can't say it. Sorry. Uh, move on. That's okay. <laughs> Time to wrap up again. Well, last week you asked for a MIDI file. My uh, friend was supposed to send it over last night. But, oh, cool! But he did. Yeah, because I'm, 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 I'm going to spill the beans. I did actually. After we talked about that, I thought that at some point. I couldn't in the edit without letting you guys know before you get the the rough cut for quality control. I could actually put a a bass line on the intro and play around with it. I also have a organ in the workshop which basically haven't gotten the airtime it deserves. So maybe I should use it for something. <laughs> but yeah, maybe for Christmas we should have some Christmas themed uh, something. That's cool.